In the previous lecture we've started discussing hypertension treatment, and exactly we discussed the sympathylytics. Today we'll discuss the second category, the agents that interfere with renin angiotensin system. And as usual, you'll find the lecture's PDF down in the description, so without any further delay, let's start. As we already know from the hypertension pathophysiology lecture, kidneys respond to reduced arterial pressure, and to sympathetic stimulation of beta-1 adrenoceptors by releasing the enzyme renin. Renin converts angiotensinogen, which is synthesized in the liver and secreted in plasma, to angiotensin 1, which is converted to angiotensin 2 in the lungs, in the presence of angiotensin-converting enzyme, ACE. Angiotensin 2 is a potent circulating vasoconstrictor, constricting both arterioles and veins, increasing peripheral resistance and blood pressure. Angiotensin 2 also stimulates aldosterone secretion, leading to increased renal sodium reabsorption and increased blood volume, which contribute to a further increase in blood pressure. These effects of angiotensin 2 are mediated by stimulation of angiotensin 2 type 1, AT1, receptors. Now we can conclude how the drugs may interfere with this mechanism. Either they inhibit renin itself, inhibit angiotensin converting enzyme, or block angiotensin 2 type 1, receptors. Let's start with the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, or known as ACE inhibitors, such as, captopril, enolapril, ramipril, focinopril, lysinopril, moxipril, perindopril, kenopril, benazapril. Trandolapril. If you notice all of them end with the part, pril. They are recommended as first-line treatment of hypertension, in patients with a variety of compelling indications, including high coronary disease risk, or history of diabetes, stroke, heart failure, myocardial infarction, or chronic kidney disease. These drugs block the enzyme ACE, which converts angiotensin 1 to the potent vasoconstrictor angiotensin 2. ACE is also responsible for the breakdown of bradykinin, which is a peptide that increases the production of the potent vasodilators, nitric oxide and prostacyclin by the blood vessels. So the net result of inhibition of ACE would be, decreased angiotensin II and increased bradykinin level, leading to vasodilation of both arterioles and veins. And we can conclude that, by reducing circulating angiotensin II levels, ACE inhibitors also decrease the secretion of aldosterone, resulting in decreased sodium and water retention. So ACE inhibitors reduce both cardiac preload and afterload, decreasing cardiac work. Common side effects of them include, dry cough, rash, fever, altered taste, hypotension, and hyperkalemia, so potassium levels must be monitored during the use of ACE inhibitors. The dry cough occurs in up to 10% of patients, it is thought to be due to increased levels of bradykinin and substance P in the pulmonary tree, and resolves within a few days of discontinuation. Angia edema may occur, it is a rare, but potentially life-threatening reaction, that may also be due to increased levels of bradykinin. Serum creatinine levels should also be monitored, particularly in patients with renal diseases. ACE inhibitors are teratogenic, they can induce fetal malformations, so they should not be used by pregnant women. The second category we'll talk about is the angiotensin II receptor blockers, such as, losartan, valsartan, erbisartan, candesartan, olmsartan, eprosartan, telmisartan, azilsartan. If you notice all of them end with the part, sartan. Similar to ACE inhibitors, these agents may be used as first-line agents for the treatment of hypertension, especially in patients with a compelling indication of diabetes, heart failure, or chronic kidney disease. They are alternatives to the ACE inhibitors. These drugs block the AT1 receptors, inhibiting the activation of AT1 receptors by angiotensin II. Similar to ACE inhibitors, they produce arteriolar and venous dilation and block aldosterone secretion, thus lowering blood pressure, and decreasing salt and water retention. But they do not increase bradykinin levels, so they are less likely to produce dry cough and angioedema. 
Other adverse effects are similar to those of ACE inhibitors. You should note that, these agents are also teratogenic and should not be used by pregnant women. These agents should not be combined with ACE inhibitors, due to the similarities between them. And finally, the third category is the renin inhibitors, such as, aliscrin. It directly inhibits renin, and it lowers blood pressure about as effectively as ARBs and ACE inhibitors. It should not be combined with an ACE inhibitor or ARBs. Aliscrin can cause diarrhea, especially at high doses and can also cause cough and angia edema, but probably less often than ACE inhibitors. As with ACE inhibitors and ARBs, aliscrin shouldn't be used during pregnancy. That's all for this lecture. In the next lecture we'll discuss the calcium channel blockers. If this lecture was useful for you, leave like and a comment of your opinion, subscribe if it's your first time here and keep following us.